the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My beloved ones, today is the 26th day of October, being Tuesday, and with 30 of the church calendar, not 19. Our readings will be coming from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 18 to 25. Our response to Psalm will come from Psalm 126, verse 3a. A gospel message will come from Luke Gospel chapter 13, verse 18 to 21. The theme of our message today is living in hope. You see, when you live in hope, you never despair. And hope is something you have not seen. You're only expecting it to happen to you. All the promises made to us by God are made in hope. You can see Jesus talking about the kingdom of heaven. He said, what can I compare it with? He said, like a, a mustard seed, one of the smallest seed, somebody took and planted in his garden or vineyard. And he grew into a big tree. And the base of the air came to make their nest at the, on, on its branches. You see, the man planted the seed in hope. The base of the eight hoped to bake their nest on this tree. And it came to be fulfilled. So they lived in hope. They planted, man planted the mustard seed, planted in hope. The base who came to make their nest made nest in hope. So the kingdom of God is a kingdom of hope. All of all are aspiring to be. All we desire to come into. What we expect to be fulfilled in us. And he said again, the kingdom of God is like a leaven, which a woman too can put in three measures of meal, hide it inside it until they were all leaven. When he was hiding the leaven, he was not expecting, he hoped it would be all leaven. It may not be leavened, but he hoped that it would be leavened. And so he did. So God is telling us about living in hope, living in the promises of God. That to be fulfilled. We wait for it to be fulfilled. We became patient for it to be fulfilled. We desire to be fulfilled. We live in that hope. And that's why Paul is telling us today in the book of Romans, he said, the brethren, I consider the sufferings of this present time and nothing to compare to be compared she lived the hope and nothing the sufferings of the present time can be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us we are expecting something more glorious so we are able to endure the sufferings when you hope on something, it makes you to persevere. You are ready to endure anything to be able to attend it. You will take all the disciplines you require to be able to there because your hope is real. He said it has nothing to be compared with what is to be revealed to us. He said for the whole creations, wait with eager longing. All creation wait for eager longing. For the revelation of the Son of God. For the creations who are subjected to fatality, not by his own will, but by who subjected it in hope. If you have not, if you have seen something, you don't need to hope on it again. If the promise made to you has been fulfilled, there is no hope anymore. But when something is promised to you and you are hoping it will be fulfilled, that's the hope you have. You see, because all of us are really groaning in pains, waiting for 
on, in hope. When you are hoping on something, you are groaning in pains. Like a woman who was expecting a child. A pang of birth, you are groaning, but you have a hope that a child will comfort. You have a hope in this place that you will achieve. You will attain the purpose. You will come to victory. You go to war in hope. You go into business in hope. You go to school in hope to pass. And it's what you hope upon that propels you on. He said, every old creation has grown in, in that very hope. Including all of us who are first fruit of the Spirit. We are growing when this our body will be liberated, when we shall be liberated from this body. We attain the glory of God. We are living in hope. Because in this hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen doesn't exist. If you have seen a hope, there is no more a hope. But what you hope on, you hope on in expectation with great patience and great perseverance for it to be fulfilled in you. Now, work when you see people who are hoping on something, they're ready to undergo any type of discipline to be able to attain it. Women will be able to attend or, or undertake anything to be able to attain the hope of securing the husband. A person going for a job, seeking for a job, will need to endure anything to be able to secure the job. Hoping the job will come to him. And people who do people naturally, do them out, out of hope, giving them hope that will never come to be. So human beings living in hope, we live in hope. If I've seen what we are talking about, we don't need to hope on anything anymore. A businessman hopes to be rich. A poor man hopes to be rich. A sick person hopes to be well. So the whole life is living in hope. And if you have a hope, you will persevere, you will not despair. And now what the psalmist who understood is so well about this need to live in hope, when you have no hope, you are finished. You will commit suicide. When you have no hope, you will easily give up. When you have no hope, you can be treated easily and you surrender. When you have a hope, it strengthens you in face of all trials and all temptations. And now what the psalmist who understood is so well today, they say, what great deed the Lord worked for us. What great deed he worked for us. We, we hope that he came to fulfill. And I always say, great work he did for us. When we're in bondage, we hope that he will regret us. And he did regret us. When we are drowning, we hope he will be save us. And he saved us. And that will be great work he had done for us. When we are in state of sin, he hope he will forgive us and he forgive us. That was a great work he had done for us. When we are in debt, he came and he gave us life. That's our hope. So living in hope is the very, very basis of a Christian life and every true being. Living in hope. People who have no hope have short-sightedness and myopic in living. And they find it easy to be frustrated. They despair and get frustrated and sometimes commit suicide or do awful things. A people who live in hope never give up. They will fight and fight. Even living up hope upon hope, as Abraham did. May God make us understand the need to live in hope. The glorious mystery is the mystery of hope. The glorious mystery we say in the rosary is the mystery of hope. Our Lord has risen from the dead. Is our hope. And we shall rise to new life. Is our decision that the writer on the Father to intercede for us. That's our hope. That he promised the Holy Spirit and he said it to the apostles. He will send us all his promise. That's our hope. That our blessed mother has zoomed into heaven. That's our hope. That will allow, help us to be in heaven. That our blessed mother is now, is now the queen of heaven. It is our hope. If our mother is there, we will be there too. So the glorious mystery is the mystery of hope. The rosary we say. 
May God help us to understand that we live in hope to persevere in this earth in face of all trials. We ask through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the promises of God, which is our hope, ever abide in us and we live it out. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you all. Oh. Oh, 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 oh,